a porn star running for vice president. Sounds outrageous, right? But believe it or not, this almost happened in the 2008 United States presidential election when adult film actress Marilyn Chambers announced her candidacy for vice president. From her rise to fame in the adult entertainment industry to her surprising venture into politics, this is the story of how Marilyn Chambers almost became a major player in American politics. Marilyn Chambers was not always a household name. In fact, she started out as Marilyn Briggs in a middle-class household in Providence, Rhode Island. Her parents were of modest family, her father working in advertising and her mother a nurse. But even from a young age, Chambers knew she was meant to be a performer. She excelled in gymnastics and diving and had a natural flair for the spotlight. Her mother always called her a show-off and her father tried to discourage her from pursuing a career in entertainment, citing the cutthroat competition. However, Chambers was determined to make a name for herself. At the age of 16, she learned how to forge her mother's signature to skip school and attend auditions in New York City. Despite facing rejection after rejection, Chambers never gave up on her dream. Soon, her persistence paid off, and she landed some modeling gigs and a small role in the film The Owl and the Pussycat under the name Evelyn Lang. But it was her next venture that would change her life forever. At the age of 19, Chambers landed the iconic role of the Ivory Soap Girl on the packaging for Ivory Snow Soap Flakes. With her blonde hair, blue eyes, and innocent smile, she became the face of purity and motherhood in America. This role not only brought Chambers fame and recognition, but also led to her being named the world's most famous babysitter. Her image was plastered on billboards, magazines, and television screens all over the country. But little did the public know, Chambers had a secret life that would soon come to light and change her reputation forever. As The Owl and the Pussycat was released, Chambers was sent on a promotional tour to Los Angeles and San Francisco. It was during this time that she discovered the adult entertainment industry and was introduced to its lucrative opportunities. In 1970, Chambers moved to San Francisco and held various jobs, including topless modeling and bottomless dancing. She even tried her luck in theater and dance groups, but was met with constant rejection. Feeling disillusioned and desperate for a break, Chambers saw an advertisement for a casting call for what was touted as a major motion picture. Little did she know, this would be the turning point in her career. Chambers rushed to the audition, hoping for a big break in mainstream cinema. However, she was shocked and dismayed when she found out that it was for a pornographic film titled Behind the Green Door by the Mitchell brothers. Chambers was initially hesitant to accept the role in a pornographic film, fearing that it would ruin her chances at making it big in Hollywood. But after hearing the plot of the film and being offered a hefty salary and a percentage of the profits, she took a leap of faith and accepted the role. Little did she know, this decision would not only change her career, but also challenge societal norms and spark controversy. Behind the Green Door was released in 1972 and became an instant hit, grossing over $25 million worldwide. Chambers' performance as a woman who was kidnapped and forced into sexual slavery was lauded by critics and audiences alike. The film's success also brought about a new era in the adult entertainment industry known as the golden age of porn. With its high production value and explicit yet artistic portrayal of sex, Behind the Green Door set a new standard for pornographic. It also paved the way for other adult films to be shown in mainstream theaters. But what truly shocked and intrigued audiences was the scene between Chambers and African-American actor Johnny Keyes. This marked the first ever interracial sex scene in a feature-length hardcore film, challenging racial prejudices and taboos of the time. The controversy surrounding Behind the Green Door only added to the film's success. Chambers, 
who was initially hesitant to be associated with the pornographic industry, found herself at the center of a cultural phenomenon. After filming concluded, she informed the Mitchell brothers that she was the Ivory Snow Girl, and they capitalized on this by billing her as the 99 and 44 100% impure girl. This added to the intrigue and curiosity surrounding Chambers and helped boost ticket sales. But not everyone was happy with the success of Behind the Green Door. Procter & Gamble, the company behind Ivory Snow, quickly dropped Chambers as their spokeswoman upon discovering her double life. The advertising industry was scandalized and Chambers became a controversial figure overnight. However, this controversy only added to her fame and made her a household name. Her image from Ivory Snow was so well known that nearly every adult film she made afterwards featured a cameo of her Ivory Snow box. But while Chambers' career in the adult entertainment industry was soaring, her personal life was facing challenges. Her relationship with Chuck Trainer, whom she had met on the set of Behind the Green Door, turned out to be abusive and tumultuous. Chambers also faced backlash from her family and friends, who were disappointed with her decision to enter the pornographic industry. She was even disowned by her father for a period of time. However, Chambers remained determined to make a name for herself and continued to star in adult films. She reunited with the Mitchell brothers for Resurrection of Eve in 1973, which was well received by critics and audiences alike. But Chambers' aspirations went beyond adult films. She saw herself as a mainstream actress and attempted to break into Hollywood with small roles in TV shows and B-movies. However, she faced constant rejection due to her association with the pornographic industry. In 1976, the Mitchell brothers released Inside Marilyn Chambers, a documentary that was composed of alternate shots and outtakes from Behind the Green Door and Resurrection of Eve. Chambers was initially unaware of its production, but negotiated a deal to receive a percentage of the profits. However, she later expressed her disappointment with the film, feeling that it misrepresented her life and experiences. This caused a rift between Chambers and the Mitchell brothers for many years. Despite this, Chambers continued to work in the adult entertainment industry, even branching out into BDSM films with Beyond Assad and Never a Tender Moment. These films were shot at the Mitchell Brothers Theater and co-starred Erica Boyer. However, Chambers' dreams of mainstream success were continuously thwarted. She was up for roles in several Hollywood films, but was constantly rejected due to her association with pornography. In early 70s, she was set to star alongside Rip Torn in City Blues, but the project fell through due to director Nicholas Ray's alcohol and drug abuse. Chambers also claimed that Jack Nicholson and Art Garfunkel brought her in for a role in Goin' South, but instead grilled her about her orgasms in Behind the Green Door, angering her to the point where she walked out. In 1977, Chambers finally got her chance at mainstream success with David Cronenberg's low-budget film, Rabid. She was initially hesitant to take on the role, fearing it would further damage her chances at a Hollywood career. But producer Ivan Reitman convinced her that it would be easier to market the film internationally with a well-known porn star in the lead. Rabid received positive reviews and Chambers' performance was praised by critics. However, she faced backlash from some members of the adult entertainment industry who felt she was selling out by trying to make it in Hollywood. Despite her efforts to break into mainstream entertainment, Chambers returned to the adult film industry in 1980 with Insatiable. The film was another success, grossing over $8 million and earning her the title Queen of Porn by Adult Video News. She continued to star in adult films throughout the 1980s, including a sequel to Insatiable and her own series, Marilyn Chambers' Private Fantasies. But as she had always wanted, Chambers attempted to transition back into mainstream acting. She appeared in small roles in films such as Angel of Heat, 
Galaxy of Terror, and Up and Coming. However, her attempts were largely unsuccessful. She was often typecast as a sex symbol, making it difficult for her to break out of adult films. In the mid-1980s, Chambers faced legal troubles when she was arrested twice for committing lewd acts during her performances at strip clubs. These incidents only added to her controversial reputation and further hindered her chances at a mainstream acting career. As the years went on, Chambers continued to struggle with personal and professional challenges. She tried her hand at directing adult films, but faced criticism for her lack of experience behind the camera. In the late 1990s, Chambers made a bold attempt at a comeback in the adult film industry with the film Marilyn Chambers Still Insatiable. However, she also ventured into more traditional roles, making cameo appearances in films such as Solitaire and Bikini Bistro. Additionally, she made guest appearances on popular television shows like Party of Five and My Guide to Becoming a Rockstar. Chambers' versatility and willingness to explore different avenues showcased her range as an entertainer. Despite facing numerous challenges and obstacles throughout her career, Marilyn Chambers continued to push boundaries and pursue new endeavors. In the early 2000s, she made a surprising move into the world of politics. In 2004, Chambers ran for Vice President of the United States on the Personal Choice Party PCP, ticket. The PCP was a libertarian political party that focused on personal choice and freedom. Chambers' inclusion on the ticket brought attention to the party and its platform. However, her run for office was met with controversy and criticism due to her background in pornography. Chambers faced backlash from members of the public and even her own family for her decision to enter the political arena. Despite these challenges, she remained determined to bring attention to issues that were important to her, such as personal freedoms and choice. Chambers saw herself as a voice for the minority that often goes unheard in mainstream politics. Her running mate, Charles Jay, was an avid supporter of Chambers and her beliefs. He saw her as a symbol of the First Amendment battles that were still being fought in the country. Together, they campaigned for issues such as preventing government interference in personal choices, legalizing gambling everywhere, and eradicating federal taxes. Their message resonated with some voters, but ultimately, they did not win the election. Chambers' political career did not end there, however. Four years later, she once again joined the political arena as Charles Jay's running mate in the 2008 United States presidential election. This time, she was listed as an alternate write-in candidate to his primary National Boston Tea Party running mate Thomas L. Knapp in nine states. Chambers' platform focused on personal choice and personal freedoms, aligning with her beliefs from her previous career in the adult film industry. She also advocated for the rights of marginalized communities, such as the LGBTQ buff community and sex workers. Despite not winning the election, Chambers' political involvement brought attention to important issues that often go overlooked by mainstream politicians. Her experience in both the entertainment industry and politics also led her to become a vocal advocate for First Amendment rights, particularly the freedom of speech and expression. She often spoke out against censorship and government regulation of personal choices. In addition to her political pursuits, Chambers also continued to be an active member of the adult entertainment industry. She was a frequent guest at conventions and events where she advocated for sex worker rights and sexual health education. On April 12, 2009, Chambers passed away at her home in California at the age of 56. Her death was attributed to a cerebral hemorrhage caused by an aneurysm related to heart disease. She left behind her daughter, sister, and brother, leaving a void in the entertainment industry and in the lives of those who admired her. Reflecting on her life and accomplishments, it is undeniable that Marilyn Chambers made a profound impact on both the world of entertainment and politics. Her fearlessness in challenging societal norms, her advocacy for personal freedoms, and her dedication to sparking conversations about sexuality and individual rights 
will forever be remembered.